Hello, welcome back or welcome to my channel. It is Sunshine Lorena and let's deal my favorite TBR. So guys, it is the 1st of February. I'm filming this late. You might, maybe from the sound of my voice, you can hear that I have the remainder of a bit of a cold going on, which is why this wasn't filmed earlier. So excuse the voice, because like honestly, this does not sound good, but TBR needs to be filmed. I'm feeling better guys, let's just deal with this. Now, last month, January's TBR was the first time I did my new TBR game. I will link below above and yeah go and check it out it has all like the kind of rules and stuff um but general picking it i picked i'm picking five cards and this matching the prompts to picking it using the prompts to pick books then first of all the major thing at the moment is i'm not doing any punishments if i don't like complete my tbr in month uh because i have an exam and i'm because I'm, I'm studying for qualification in june so you know we we don't we don't need punishments to make things worse However, just a little update, I achieved my January TBR and the final book, The Boy in Headlights, I read 51% and my cutoff was 50% to be read in a month to, to, for it to count, so go me guys. But more about that will be in, in my January wrap up. So let's just get into it. Okay, so nine of clubs, that means it is an audiobook guys. And the one that I went for is Ultra Processed People by Chris Chris Van Tulken. Um, and this is on my Audible TBR. It's one that I picked up quite a while ago when I had Audible. I haven't gotten around to listen to it. And it is on my 24 and 24. It is, isn't it? And it's on my 24 and 24 list, so it makes sense to an audiobook from there. But anyway, uh, this is non-fiction. I also want to, you know, read at least 15% of non-fiction in the year. So again, made sense picking a non-fiction on my TBR just to kind of keep that up, to keep the percentage looking good, you know? So this one is a manifesto to change how you eat and how to you think about the human body. It's not about you, it's a food. We have entered a new age of eating. For the first time in human history, most of our calories come from an entirely novel set of substances called ultra-processed food. There's a long formal scientific definition, but it can be boiled down to this. If it's wrapped in plastic and has at least one ingredient that you wouldn't find in your kitchen, it's UPF. These products are specifically engineered to behave as addictive substances driving excess consumption. They're now linked to the leading cause of early death globally and the number of one cause of environmental destruction. Yet almost all of our staple foods are ultra processed. UPF is our food culture and for many people it is only available and affordable food. So Chris Van Tolkien uh, in this book is kind of looking at this ultra processed food and kind of like what it does to us etc. There's a whole, it's a really long synopsis guys but I I think it's going to be really interesting um, as somebody who has gluten intolerance as well I really do notice ingredients and stuff because I have to check if something has gluten and you will be surprised first of all the amount of random stuff that has gluten in it that is just like why is this in here plus then you see this whole bunch of stuff that honestly have no idea what it is so this I think is really interesting and that's why when I saw it that's kind of what sparked my interest and yeah looking forward to it. Okay, the next card I pulled was the King of Diamonds and it doesn't matter what suit the king is, it's always a free pick, guys. So, love a free pick. And I went for a Shout Out to My Ex by Sandy Barker and this is number two in the Ever After Agency series that she's doing. I read the first one, Match Me If You Can, about six months ago. I think it was September, I think it was September that the, the first one is out. This is an arc that's coming out now in February, hence why I wanted to try and get it on this TBR to read because I kind of have to read it anyway. This is a romance and the, the Match, Me, Match Me If You Can was the first book by her I ever read. And this one continues in the series. I enjoyed that one, so why not give it a go, I thought. And it's February, it is the month of love, so you know, some romances on this TBR is definitely needed. So this is following fashion designer Elle Bliss, and she is unlucky in love. She's still hung up on her first love, Leo, who ended things abruptly, then mysteriously disappeared. And a decade on, no one else can measure up. What a weird noise. I feel like the neighbors are doing something since it worked. So if you hear that, sorry. 
Um, but Elle's all-time dream of showing in Paris, Fashion Week is about to come reality and she has no time to dwell on her dismal love life. That is until Leo, now gone by Lorenzo, comes back into her life. Lorenzo is a uh, up-and-coming shoe designer and is nothing like the man that she fell in love with. He's rude, he's brash and with an ego the size of Paris, he's took up in his own celebrity. But they are constantly crossing paths in the city of love. Elle begins to question how much of Lorenzo is an act, a persona for the cameras, because deep down she can still see glimpses of the, the man he was. And all those feelings from all those years ago are becoming impossible to ignore. So in another synopsis, I did see this being compared to Devil Wears Prada meets Emily in Paris, and I'm here for those vibes. I think this is gonna be fun. Like I said, it's February, a nice light book. It's also a shorter month as well, so we need the easy light books. Okay, so the Ten of Spades, and it is the longest on my TBR. Now, I can't specifically pinpoint the absolute longest clear shadow of a doubt because there's books on my shelves that have been there for a very long time, but this is definitely one of the longest ones I have owned and that is The House of Spirits by Isabella Allende. This is on my self-destruct TBR for this year, so again, you know, it's good to get some of that out of the way sooner rather than later. So this is magical realism, also kind of like literary fiction as well. It is a multi-generational family saga, which they can be really good. I do enjoy like multi-generational things that go over a long period of time. Plus, magical realism just, it's nice. I think I like it. I don't read too much in that genre, but I do like it. And this is quite famous. It will help me on my read around the world challenge to check off Chile. So, you know, another challenge ticker offer. I know that's not a proper word, but we're going with it. So this spans four generations and it is has a memorable, often eccentric cast of characters, which I love, guys. I love stuff like that. Um, together, men and women, spirits, the forces of nature and of history covers converge an unforgettable, wholly absorbing and brilliantly realised novel that is richly entertaining as it is a masterpiece of modern literature. There is a film and it has Meryl Streep in it. It was came out a very long time ago. I mean, in my lifetime, but like, we're talking like a long time ago. But I like the sound of it. Like I said, I love multi-generational stories, magical realism, and I don't think I've ever read a book by an author who's from Chile, so I think it'd be really nice and interesting as well. So, three of spades means a pull pick. So I put a pull pick up on Instagram. I'll do my little screenshot here so you can see the results. So as you can see, I had shouted to my ex. Yes, I know, picked it for my free pick, but guys, I obviously draw these cards in advance. And once I saw the results of this poll, I decided just to do shout out to my ex as my free pick because like I said, it's an arc, I have to read it anyway. So I used it for my free pick, okay? Just, it's my TBR game, my TBR. I make the decisions. Um, then I had Daisy Hates, which is book number two in the Magnolia Parks universe. I read the first one in January, uh, then The Other Wife, and then The Neighbours. So as you can see, Daisy Hates and The Other Wife came neck and neck. So I'm just gonna take the final vote on those two. I haven't put up another poll. You know, it's just easier. I make the final decision, guys, and I'm going with Daisy Hates by Jessa Hastings. Like I said, I read Manolio Parks in January. You will, when my when my wrap up for January comes out, you'll be able to see my thoughts, real thoughts on that. But I loved it, guys. So I want to continue on with the series. Now, this actually has a higher average rating than Manolio Parks, except but Manolio Parks Parks has more people that have rated it. So is it truly better? Who knows, because it is about 40,000 difference in the amount of people that have rated it. So it is quite a big difference to skew the average, you know? But in this one, we're actually following 20 year old Daisy Hates, in case you didn't guess by the title of the book. Um, and she's, all she's wanted is a normal life, but it's not on the cards for her. Raised by her older brother, Julian, since their parents were murdered in front of them 12 years ago, Daisy hasn't ever lived beyond the watchful gaze of her gang lord brother. But Julian's line of work means that Daisy's life is complicated. And things don't become any less com complex when she falls hard for Christian Hems, the beautiful and emotionally unavailable boy she's been involved with for the last few months, who also happens to be one of the few men in London who doesn't answer to Julian. Christian's life is no walk in the park either. Being in love with his best friend's girlfriend and all, he's happy enough to use Daisy to throw off the scent of his true affections, that is until she starts to infiltrate those two. As the romance blossoms into something ne neither were anticipating, Daisy, Christian and Julian each have to come to terms with the fact that in this life everything comes at a price. 
As a relationship intersects and tangle, they all learn that something, sometimes life's most worthwhile pursuits can only be paid in blood. So Daisy, we did meet her in the first one. Um, we didn't see too much about her, so I think it's gonna be really good to kind of see her side of the story and her brother and her brother Julian as well because we don't know too much about them. Christian was actually quite a big bit part of the first one, the first book. I'm not going to say too much spoilers and all that but I think it's really nice for us to see a couple of characters that were mentioned, had a bit of intrigue around their stories but not actually knowing the full story so I think it'll be really good. I just want to continue this series because honestly is it the best written thing ever? No but it is just what you need. It's a little bit trashy, easy to read, it does have those Gossip Girl vibes except they're actually in their 20s not when they're high school but like you know high society like oh, love it. Just love it. Had to choose this one guys. I just had to choose it. So pulled out an Ace of Diamonds. Now Aces like Kings etc is the same prompt across the board and this is is to use a word from uh, Buzzwordathon. So if you don't know what Buzzwordathon is it's hosted by Lala Books and I have never taken part in it but I always see people mention it and I thought give it a go this year. Have I read January's one? No. But my idea is I'm not going to follow it month by month as long as I kind of tick them off throughout the year. I'm happy for it. However, having said that, I'm actually going to use February's words, which are positive, happy words. And I decided to go with How Beautiful We Were by Mbolo Mbue. Beautiful is a happy, positive word. Somebody's beautiful. It works. This is, again, an audiobook from my Audible TBR. It's on my 24 and 24. And the author is from Cameron, so it's going to help me with my read around the world. Love being able to take off multiple things at once, guys. So this one is set in the fictional African village of Koswa. This is the story of a people living in fear and mist environmental degradation wrought by an American oil company. Pipeline spills have rendered farmland infertile. Children are dying from drinking toxic water. Promises of cleanup and financial repartations are made and broken. Left with a few few choices, the people of Kosoa decide to fight back, but it will come at a steep price. One generation which one which generation after generation will have to pay. How beautiful we are is a masterful exploration of what happens when the reckless drive for profit, coupled with the ghost of colonialism, comes up against one of the community's detrimentation to hold onto its ancestral ancestral land and a young woman's willingness to sacrifice everything for the sake of her people's freedom. This sounds just so good. It is literary fiction and you know touching on environmental issues, also looking at you know the impacts of those like people essentially who are greedy want to exploit land and make as much money as possible. I think it's covering off a lot of things in these book this book and I must um, I'm looking forward to reading it and hopefully put it on the radar of some other people because I haven't really seen people speak about this book and it might be just the people that I follow and it's not their type of book but it just sounds really good and I'm looking forward to picking it up. So that's it, that is all the books on my February TBR. We are keeping it simple and easy, only one physical book this month, last month was two books but I still have to finish off The Boy in the Headlights so it's fine guys but I'm happy to be at least attempting to tick off a few more of those 24 and 24 books a few more read around the world and you know just getting through all these different lists because guys I have so many different TBRs in the go it's a little bit ridiculous but let me know if you have read any of these and which one you are looking forward to see my review on hit that like button hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out any more content from me and I'll hopefully see you in the next one bye Head is cut off, guys. No, we don't want that. Is this better? It is better.